Just in case. One, two, three. I got two. I don't know. What's <laughs> What's up guys, it's Kevin with Lazy Alien, and uh, I'm joined today once again by Liam Gibbs, who's the author of In a Galaxy Far, Far Awry. Uh, if you saw our ToyCon video, we got to talk very, very briefly about the series, and we were so interested that we wanted to bring it back and get a little more in-depth about the series, so... Here I am! Liam, thank you very much for joining us, we really, really appreciate it. How was, how was the trip down? Any... Trip down was, uh, we made a day of it, we went to, uh, I was telling you outside, we went to Gananoque, did like a, one of their, I think Gananoque, their thing is boat tour, so... Yeah. We did a boat tour. We stopped off at a pizza place, and uh, <clears throat> so it really kind of wasn't a trip. It was just like we were just already here, almost. All right. So it was great. Great, great day. Awesome. Let's see where to start here. It's like it's such an ex expansive series that I almost don't know where to start the questions for it. You know, I guess the biggest thing I the biggest thing I noticed about it was that it kind of it was a long time coming. Uh, yeah. That it you started this a long, long time ago, and you really have have only recently started to get the means to publish it and get it out there to people. Uh, is there, like, what's, what's the story behind that? The story behind this is, uh, if you guys are thinking this is all scripted, I, everything I do is, I wing everything, so uh, <laughs> I might be missing a couple details, but uh, the story is I made up this stuff in, like, uh, like grade school and stuff. I guess we had, like, a, I'm going back a ways, but I think we had, like, some kind of creative writing project and decided to throw a bunch of stuff together because I grew up with, with all these influences, right, like, with, you know, space aliens and, and, and superpowers, and I decided just to mash everything together. And, um, you know, one day they were saying, let's, you know, our assignment in class was we're going to do a, um, you know, creative writing thing. So it can be five pages, it can be six pages, it can be a hundred pages. I mean, we're in grade school, so who's going to write a hundred pages, right? But <laughs> the sky was the limit. I decided, well, I was going to write this stuff. And I just finished, uh, you know, watching Spaceballs, I think, for like the first or eleventh time. <laughs> Careful, you idiot! I said across her nose, not up it! Sorry, sir! Doing my best! And so, uh, I guess it was kind of going off that riff of like this uh, space balls kind of comedy thing with, uh, you know, space aliens and, and uh, superheroes and stuff like that. Mashed it all together, decided I was going to write this, and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, you know, handed it in, got, you know, the usual, like, uh, you know, C minus or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's too much fun, so I decided, well, I'm going to. You know, keep going. So I wrote this whole gigantic kind of opus. It turned out to be like 700 pages. Nobody, like who in grade school writes 700 friggin' pages of a book? And so every time, uh, every time I learned a tip, I would, uh, you know, incorporate it into the story and it'd be going over the story a hundred, you know, like, you know, dozens and dozens of times. And uh, I got sick of it. I got sick of looking at this. And I really wanted to publish this actually. So... You know, wanted to always be ready. If there's anybody out there who was, uh, you know, wanted to get a copy, it's going to be ready like that. It's going to be all polished, ready to go. But I was going over it. I was just, it was this gigantic headache. So I just said I was going to take a break. I was going to write something a little bit shorter, uh, you know, an origin story or whatever to this stuff. So I started at ground zero, uh, wrote, you know, something was about 10 pages and then kind of stuck it away for, you know, whatever. Because, you know, I wanted to play basketball or baseball or something. You know, it was summertime. I wanted to go outside. <laughs> Uh, and then I just kind of dug around on my computer on these old files one day and I dug it up and I read through it and went, you know, that's actually not bad, you know, and so I decided I was going to continue and I finished it. It was better than the other old stuff, you know, the 700 page thing that I was sick of looking at. And so I decided I was going to polish this instead. And uh, that became the series. So you're looking at a rebooted series. So I decided, you know, I was doing number one. That worked out fine. We do number two, number three, number four. And here we go. Here we are today. That's how it started. So I'm kind of curious, because uh, because I'm a writer myself and I, I tend to go for for novel length stuff. I'm wondering how difficult was that to, to translate a 700 page epic into something more this. serial? Uh, this is actually when I say it's rebooted, I just kind of took the bits and pieces, but the storyline uh, itself is like I kind of trashed that. So the 700 page thing it hasn't kind of come up yet. I just rewrote new stories using the same characters, the same kind of flavor, the same kind of, uh, you know, like the settings and stuff like that, the same, you know, personalities. And there's some characters in here that never showed up before, some characters I scrapped, some characters that were, they're totally unrecognizable, they're only in there in name. There's one character that had a sex change. 
Uh, so, I mean, like, a lot of this is kind of not familiar with, if you read the old stuff, and you're never going to read the old stuff, because, quite frankly, it's tragically horrible. <laughs> uh, but if you ever did come across the old stuff, you wouldn't recognize some of the characters. I mean, they're only in there by name, and, you know, some okay. of them don't even show up. Some of them are new. Some of them are renamed. Some of them are, you know... Okay, yeah. so it's, it's something totally new. Totally different, yeah. I mean, like, one day I might revisit those old storylines and stuff like that, but it's not going to be today. Okay. So I'm curious, in terms of, uh, like, pure writing, who were your influences as a writer? Like, who, who did you read as a kid? Um, I read, and this is mostly comic books, you probably think, oh, like, I read, like, you know, like, Jules Verne or something like that. No, it's, I read, um, you know, stuff like uh, the old Spider-Mans, the old right. X-Men. Um, <clears throat> Fabian Nicieza, who uh, ended up... He wrote New Warriors, and that was my favorite comic book growing up, and he ended up being the guy who made up Deadpool. So everybody knows him as the Deadpool guy, but I know him as the New Warriors guy. Uh, and um, a lot of influences from that, and a lot of it you'll find from like movies and TV shows. Like There's like um, obviously Star Wars, obviously Spaceballs, uh, you know, Seinfeld is in there a lot, Mystery Science Theater type humor, uh, you know, things like that, even like Back to Future Ghostbusters. like. If I ever came across it, it was probably shoved in there somewhere. Futurama's in there a lot, things like that. Those are the big influences. So it's mostly like uh, you know comic books and TV shows and movies and things like that, like Robert Zemeckis type stuff and things like that. Okay. Um, so what about these illustrations? Is this is this all you or is there something? This is these? not me. I uh, I keep telling people if everybody get, comes up to me goes, oh, those are great. You know, I I tell them I can do stick man. <laughs> That's my limit. I can do a stick man. But no, I hired out. One of the first things that I, I thought of is when I wanted to uh, publish is I went with Kickstarter because I wanted a uh, complete control. I wanted to do Kickstarter uh, self-publishing thing. I didn't go with the publishing house. I had a few bites, but uh, I was kind of afraid they're going to dictate. You know, this is the title, this is the cover, and stuff like that. And I wanted it to have the feel of a comic book. So I went out there. I went on uh, DeviantArt and I found uh, a whole bunch of uh, comic artists, and I kind of. Uh, pulled, I think, like four or five of them, and I kind of interviewed them, I guess. I don't know if those guys are watching, but you were interviewed. And uh, kind of picked my favorite, and I went with him, uh, the American guy for the first one here, a guy from the States. And for some reason, I went to a Russia for the rest of them. And uh, same site, DeviantArt, I found somebody from Russia to do the other ones. But uh, the art is the only part in here that's not mine. The rest of it is mine. The art, unfortunately, like if you guys want a stickman, I can give you stickman, but I'm pretty sure you don't want stickman. So I had to hire out for the art. So I was kind of wondering because I, I know you you have a, a professional background in writing, that you have education in writing. So yeah. Obviously, that's the medium you chose. Was that the only reason? I'm wondering. Was there ever any chance of considering a different medium, like animation or something like that? Or uh, people have asked me. Well, they asked me if I wanted to make a movie out of it, of all things. And, you know, obviously I want to do, you know, if somebody wants to come up to me and say, you know, we, we want to do a cartoon show, I'm not going to say no. We want to do a, you know, a movie of it. Yeah, why not, you know, a comic book. Uh, but I chose writing because it was the most accessible to me. I always, you know, I liked writing when I was a kid and I like, you know, I grew up with writing. Uh, my grandfather actually kind of, kind of gently nudged me into writing. Um, but if I ever wanted to get into like scripting or something like that, I might, you know, make a TV pilot episode out of this or something to see where it goes. Um, I think most people actually ask me if you ever consider doing a comic book, and I tell them again, like, I can't draw. Uh, a comic book could probably cost $120 a page or something like that. Don't have the money for that right now. Okay. Uh, so we'll wait and see if that ever happens. Like I said, I'm, I, I write myself, and I, I know when uh, when I talk to a lot of people about the stuff I write, a, a, a lot of the time the reaction is like, "Wow, how do you come up with that stuff? There's there's so much going on there. How does that all come together?" And I, I think a lot of people who have creative ideas like that struggle with the scope of the scale of it, and with something that's you know four issues long, coming out with a fifth. 20 total plans so far is that right uh i've got ideas up until about 25 and then i decided i'm going to cut myself off there uh because i didn't want to kind of shoehorn myself into this like you know 10 year commitment like oh i got plans up to number 50 and then you know get exhausted by the time i come up to like number 26 so i cut myself right. 25 but i'm actually working on number 20 right now okay okay so i guess the question is uh do you have any kind of advice for would-be writers uh who are kind of struggling with the scope and the scale of the projects in their head. I would say, uh, if any advice, try anything. If, if you're finding that, uh, you know, winging it is great, wing it. 
if you're finding that uh, you know winging it doesn't work, sit down and plan things out. You know, try to try to constrain the scope. Try to if, you know if you don't feel like it, you get your butt in the seat anyway because it's what it, what it's all about. Uh, you know, if you need to have complete quietude, find yourself a place to be. If you need to be outside, be outside. Try different things. Try to experiment. If something doesn't work, if you feel uninspired, do something else. If nothing's inspiring you, just sit down, write a few pages. Doesn't have to be Shakespeare. It can just be total utter crap. You're gonna have time to fix it up later. In fact, you're gonna have to fix it up later. Nobody, nobody does a first draft perfectly. But just get something on the computer. Get your butt in the chair. It's work like any other work. Sometimes we feel like doing it. Sometimes we won't feel like doing it. I know I'm all over the place right now. But just get your butt in the chair. See what comes out. Fix it up later. Just get it out there any way you can. Any way you can. If if you're having trouble, you know, like. The scope is just too wild. Figure out what you don't need. If you know you think the scope isn't wild enough, make it wild. If you need to get drunk, get drunk. I noticed on the website that you got about twenty plans. You said twenty-five. And that's the cutoff. Point. That's the cutoff. I'm not. If there's a number twenty, I know there's going to be a number twenty at twenty-six. I'm just trying not to think that far ahead because when twenty-five comes around, I want to be as surprised as you guys. Okay. Yeah. A tentative cutoff point anyway. Tentative. I mean, if I come up with something, yeah, I'll, I'll put something in there, but. Okay. Uh, so that was, I guess, the question was, is there any kind of end in sight or is it always going to be open-ended as long as people want to read it? As long as people want to read it. I, I say that even if you guys aren't reading it, I'm just going to keep writing it. I mean, I mm-hmm. wrote up to number, I think, 16 before I said I was going to get my button gear and get this stuff published. But, uh, I keep telling people I'm, I'm either going to, I'm going to write it until I'm either bored of it or I'm dead. That's when it's going to end. For people who have read all four. What can they what can they look forward to in number five? Number five is uh, well if you got number four you got kind of a preview chapter, but number five, don't look for any new characters to be introduced. Uh, but it's all about the bad guys. Uh, kinda kinda go to the good guys' home base and they kind of invade it right there. So I'm not gonna tell you a new, little bit any more of that, but if you guys uh, if you guys are into uh, kamikaze, he's in there a little bit more. If you guys are into uh, Reef, he's in there a little bit more. You get a little bit more of a feel about him, but uh, it's basically the good guys versus the bad guys in a different situation. You're going to love it, though. Just a silly personal question, because I was reading on the website and I read about the character uh, Blood Bunny. Okay. And, and I was curious, have you ever heard of Benicula? I did. Was there any uh, connection there? Did, no, there's none at all. But people <laughs> ask me that like all the time. I know okay. Benicula. It was like... Uh, I never, and I never read it either. It was weird, okay. but I did uh, something about it was a bunny, and he would suck the juice out of vegetables or something. Yeah, uh, and that's all. Of, it's like a book series, and it's all of one another. I think they're making a TV show out of it now, or something like that. I heard sure. that. Okay, I, I read them as a little kid, and I just I, I had this vision when I heard the name Blood Bunny. I had this vision of like Benicula as a some kind of you know fantasy sci-fi warrior, and that was just that was it. That was an awesome idea. I went with. <laughs> When I was a kid, I went with bunnies because, uh, you know, the whole thing about bunnies is they, they procreate like crazy, right? right. Like, you know, you have two of them, and then suddenly you wake up in the morning, there's 200. And I thought, well, vampires, they like to you they like to infect the next guy, and the next guy make more and more vampires. So, well, what's better about making vampires and, you know, a, something that procreates like crazy, right? So there you go. Put the two together and kind of have a nice ring to it. You know, the alliteration with the bees, and that's what goes on in grade school. <laughs> that's all it takes. <laughs> Well, you look at Stan Lee, right? All yeah. those character names. Yeah, Peter Parker, <laughs> Stephen Strange, Stephen Summers, uh, the Fantastic Four dude, the other Fantastic Four dude. <laughs> <laughs>
Event Horizon was one of those. Um, you know, Ghostbusters is one of those. If you're looking for B movies, there's this movie called Subterrain, which is horrible. It was horrible. It was like this. Uh, it sounds like Lawnmower Man, I know, but it's like this computer game that came to life, and it was all of these people trying to escape a parking garage, and they were stuck in this computer game. And last time I saw it was maybe five years ago, so I'm kind of giving it a vague recollection of what mm-hmm. I remember about it. But that was kind of cool. Um, and uh, you know, as far as sci-fi movies go, there's I'm always like you know the mainstream stuff like Ghostbusters, Terminator. Stuff like that was what I grew up on, and that was always great. Uh, Terminator back then was like, you know, a, a huge deal, and then, you know, nowadays you're looking back at the special effects, and you can almost consider it a big movie, but it's not really. Uh, Terminator 2, I know, was in another class, but... Um, and then there are all those, mo- those movies that I can never catch up on. I can never... If anybody knows where to find an affordable uh, copy of, uh, was it Chopping Mall? Blood Beach? I never saw those movies, but I always saw them in the in the movie racks when I was a kid. VHSs. My parents would never let me rent these things, and I always wanted to. Why is this woman being sucked up in a beach? Who knows? Why is <laughs> there a bunch of body parts in this shopping mall bag? I want to see these things, and I never never got to see these things. That's a good question. Really, is where to find those movies? Because yeah, it's it's tough. I have there's no idea. A, there's a place in Kingston. Do you remember the name of this place that sells a lot of old movies? It's, it's way downtown by the water. I, I cannot remember the name of the place, but it had just a ton of old movies and a ton of obscure stuff. You might be able to find some some interesting stuff there. Is anyone watching who has any invi- advice on where to find the more? Send it to me. I want to find it. Send it to me too. I want to know. <laughs> So, so you got over some of your favorite uh, comic books that were your big inspirations, like uh, like like Spider Man, like um, what else was there? Uh, Spider Man, X Men, New Warriors. All you DC fans are probably thinking, "Where's the Batman? Where's the Superman? Where's all this <laughs> stuff?" It's more of a Marvel guy. Um, there was there are a couple of DC comics in there somewhere, but it's, it's mostly like Spider Man, X Men, uh, New Warriors. What else was there? There's all, all these like old like Dark Hawk. Where the freak did Dark Hawk come from? But it turned out to be amazing. Sleepwalker. I don't know if anybody remembers that. It was like this comic book that ran for like two, two and a half years. And I kind of gobbled that up. Deathlock. Um, you know, I kind of branched out in Avengers and stuff like that a little bit here and there. Um, you know, there was like, sometimes I was probably, you know, collecting like you know 10 or 15 comic books at a time or something. Because when you get X-Men, you're automatically, uh, your wallet's automatically in for like eight Wolverine series. And like, you know, there's, you know, four limited like Nightcrawler, Colossus, or whatever is in there, and then stuff like that. Kind of snowballs. It does snowball. Like, you know, Spider Man and X Men, I think, accounted for about like uh, 80% of what Marvel was putting out at the time. So I'm wondering, because I do this myself as a writer, there's a quote somewhere that says uh, every writer essentially just writes what they know. So there, there's always bits and pieces of themselves in their work somewhere. Yeah. Uh, is there any kind of real world inspiration from any of the characters in, uh, in a Galaxy Far Far Rye at all? Uh, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, this person, this friend of mine is this character, this friend of mine is this character, not really. You know, um, you want to protect people's identity, I understand that. Well, I have no idea. Like, I mean, I might put bits and pieces of things that I observe, but honestly, I can never say this guy is this guy here and this guy is this guy here. It kind of didn't happen. Okay. Um, and I know, like, you know, you're, you know, Liam, don't be us. There's got to be some of you in here. And I know, yes, yeah, some, every writer, when they write something, if they intend not to put any of themselves in there, it's going to creep in there somewhere. So I know something of me is in here somewhere. If anybody, if you got, like, some psychology expert who's reading this and can pick <laughs> things out here and there, and go, Liam, you're this guy and this OCD thing or this whatever, it's got to be in there somewhere. I just have no idea where it is. This was Cypher's question. This was Chris came up with this question. Uh, it's gonna be a good one then. Did uh, did this start at all because you wanted to be a superhero yourself personally? What? How dare you? Uh, and, I and, probably and, did actually. I have no idea. We're going idea. back a while, so I have no idea. But I mean, obviously, every kid wants to be a superhero, or right. you know, like, um, you know, what kid doesn't want to teleport to work because they can just. <laughs> you know, skip the whole friggin' bus commute, right? But, right. Uh, honestly, I have no idea. I just like superheroes, like superhero comics, and I just stuck that in there, like, okay. you know, space. I know that, um, yeah, here it is. You're probably thinking, like, you know, what part have you got in here? Yeah, I put it in space because I always wanted to know what the future was like, you know, like, what kind of cool gadgets are we going to come up with? Like, 
we ever been coming with teleportation or lasers or whatever like so that, that put was that your, in here that was your draw to superheroes not more so the powers kind of aspect um, or the abilities or the it was a bit of both people can't do things that people can't do everybody wants to do something that somebody can't do right yeah. um did I myself ever want to fly or you know shoot lasers out of my eyeballs or you know like have the power to well, I think everybody wants the power to be able to woo women, right? But right. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. I didn't want to ever want to really fly or turn invisible or anything like that. Um, if I did, I wasn't aware of it. So I just kind of stuck a bunch of the superhero stuff that I loved reading about in here. But as far as the space aspect is concerned, I always wanted to go into space. I always wanted to find alien civilizations that could do this and do that. And we didn't have the technology to do that yet. We could cure cancer. We could you know, get from point A to point B just by, you know, doing that or whatever, you know, it's all cool stuff. I just wanted to, that's why I watched science fiction shows and movies, because I wanted to see the cool gadgets that people come up with. So the, the, the unique writing style, the kind of, the kind of casual nature of it, like it almost, it almost flows the way a, a real conversation does. I'm, I'm wondering if that, if that's just, just your own voice or was that something kind of incorporated to appeal to a certain crowd at all or to bring more a wider audience in or is that is that just your voice that's my voice okay <clears throat> every writer uh when they first start writing out they always write stiff robotic horrible sentences they all sound like they came off of some like english essay that they're trying to impress somebody with that's step one whenever when you when you start reading it or we start writing it and you start uh you know, years down the road, you start molding your own voice. You kind of get into this kind of comfortability of, you know, this is who I am. Um, you know, I'm not putting on a show anymore. I realized that was all, you know, crap. This is the real me. And you kind of mold your own voice. You know, every writer has to have their own voice. If they don't have their own voice, they look like, like a carbon copy of somebody else. Um, so, you know, years and years and years of writing for me, you know, just I, I ended up finessing my own voice into some kind of, casual you know just conversational regular guy kind of voice so it's, that's what I try to put forward okay something that doesn't you know try to be too scary too you know too highbrow or anything like that just you know something accessible three dollar sentences you know <laughs> two syllable words three syllable words things like that something accessible yeah I was kind of curious that when, when you picked it back up to polish it right when you when you read it and you were like well, I actually yeah, it's not bad stuff. Yeah, it's not bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, did did that world start to like just open up in your head a bit more as you were like, it needs to be polished, it needs to be refined. Did, did it plague you at all, or did it did it, was it something maybe you really really just like, yeah, oh yeah. It was actually it, it was weird because I don't remember ever like I remember writing the draft, but I don't remember anything about it. So I had like as I was saying the old you know seven hundred page monster. I actually had two of them. And it was all like, uh, it was almost like a different world. And then when I wrote this other stuff and I put it away and I came back to it, I went, yeah, this is the world that I want. This is, it's almost like, did it open up? Yeah, it opened up like this. It was almost so like. it was a two step between two worlds. Yeah. That you had one that you had already blown up in your mind several years back. Yeah. And then you went into this world again and you're like, no, no, I can take this and make it like. Mm. Grander, yeah. Like yeah. I took, I took this thing, and then I wrote this other, other stuff. And as I said, I like I put it away for I don't know how long, a mm -hmm. year, two years, or something like that. And then I looked back and I went, this world, I can see point A to point B, but this is how I want it to be. I don't, you know, this is okay. This is better. <laughs> you this, yeah, this, that. this is more real. This is, you know, it's more realistic. Uh, it tells a lot more about what's going on, and then this kind of, you know, constrained little, kind of beast or whatever you call it this is how i really want it to look like and so i kind of not that i forgot about this stuff but i went this is this is the real stuff this is the reboot forget this other stuff this is more fun this is how i want it to be this is exactly it. and it was exactly how i wanted it to be and it ended up being better because you know as you go along you fix things up and you kind of backtrack and you write ideas in to previous issues and things like that but i knew this is what i wanted it to be and it was totally different it was yeah, like it was like night and day, like same thing, but you're looking at it at a different angle, a better angle. Something now, that looks did, better. Did you take that that world and did you trash it, or did you leave that open to kind of pick things from still? I pick things from it. Ah, yeah, that's 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 an artist. Right I now. do, I, I do, <laughs> and and actually the um, Blood Bunny. Uh, actually, I do have ideas for taking that 
story. It shows up in like uh, number 18 and I've kind of, and uh, I, I have written number 18. And I know that I said earlier that I haven't used any of the old stuff, but the old Blood Bunny story and the new one that I wrote, it totally, they're not the same at all. So I have really haven't even gone over that stuff. I still can go back there and kind of pick things out and use it and stuff like that's not really used up yet. Uh, but I did take some of the old characters and stick them back in and, and you can kind of see where the night and day analogy comes from. It's like totally different. It's the taking taking totally them from different. night and putting them into day gives into them their day. own new color. New yeah, it's like, like as I said earlier, like, you know, some of the characters are sex changed. Some of them are like, yeah, like two in particular just like have nothing it's to do. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's pretty, yes, the new millennium, guys. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like totally different. And some of the characters are totally different. Some of the situations, this Blood Bunny character is vampire rabbit thing. It's not even a vampire anymore, by the way. I got sick of hearing about Twilight, so I just <laughs> trash that. It's now just some kind of demon thing. Uh, he doesn't sparkle. Sorry, all you Stephanie Myers fans, or whatever her name is. Um, but he's just kind of some kind of demonic rabbit that just kind of every time he gets killed, he takes on a new form. And uh, that's about the only thing that's almost recognizable from the old Blood Bunny. It's, other than that, it's just a totally different story, totally different origin. Uh, some of the characters are, are the same, but. Totally different situation, totally different um, beginning to end. Everything is different. Is there any uh, evidence of fourth wall breaks in, in this at all? No, not at all. No. And I always wanted to have a character who's aware that he's in a, uh, a book. Wasn't talking to you. I was talking to them. But I, I haven't managed to write actually, him in there. The, the reason I ask is I think with your writing style, you'd be able to pull it off flawlessly. Yeah. I always wanted to put a character in there, but it's just like... Where do you find the room? You got like, you know, 10 or 15 yeah. characters. Where do you add this other guy? How do you wedge him in? How do you make him... How do you give him enough uh, attention to make him matter? Yeah. You know, rather than just kind of wedging him in and then getting yeah, rid of him and never seeing him again. Yeah, exactly. You got to kill off a lot of characters before you get any room for this guy. Uh, I've seen a lot of the, the influences of the actual superheroes when I was reading through a lot of the characters on your website. Uh, a lot of the powers and a lot of how... Certain characters don't even get certain. You're not even entitled to certain information on certain characters. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I kind of love that. It's just like you know, it's just like don't check back there. <laughs> like like <laughs> as I said, like I wrote up to like like I'm working on number twenty right now, and it's hard to uh, remember. Okay, what like you guys have gotten number four? What am I not supposed to tell you yet? Because I've got like you know like what happens to this kid? What happens to that kid? I know. I can't tell you guys because it doesn't happen to like number. Eight, nine, ten, you know, it's hard fifteen. Keeping track of where everyone else is. Exactly. Like if I spoiler. put out a spoiler, do I? I have no idea. Sometimes, like that never happened. I didn't know that was gonna happen. <laughs> Ruin the whole thing. Thanks, Liam. <laughs> I'm just curious. Have you ever done that? Have you ever accidentally like tweeted a spoiler and then go, "Oh shit!" Almost did. Really? Almost, almost, almost did. I almost put it on my website, but then I thought, you know, before I upload it, I went, "Oh crap!" I can't, I can't tell you that yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> Really quickly before we do that, uh, do you want to do you want to plug all your website stuff and everything one more time? Oh, you guys, yeah, you guys can visit me anywhere. Uh, in a galaxy far, far away. Com. You guys know the uh, whole Star Wars byline in a galaxy far, far away. Just take that last. It is the last day. Yeah, take the last day. Switch with an R. Ad. Com. There you go. Uh, you guys want to visit me on Facebook? You can uh, visit me uh, bit. Lee slash i a g f f a underscore Facebook. Uh, Twitter is underscore Twitter. LinkedIn is underscore LinkedIn. Google Plus is underscore Google Plus. Uh, I don't know where else you can find me at. Um, you know, kind of social media site. I might be on there one day. I have no idea. I tried on Pinterest, but I didn't really work out. So don't try me on Pinterest. <laughs> So, uh, Liam, I do want to say thanks once again for coming down. We no really problem. appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, I'm going to be purchasing all four of these issues today. So. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing a little more coverage on the series once we once we read it. I'd, I'd love to talk about it a little more on the channel. We'll try to avoid spoilers. Sure, if you guys read it. I look for number five, hopefully Christmas. There we go. Cross look forward, my fingers. Look forward to issue five coming at Christmas. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully coming at Christmas. Hopefully. We'll see where the money goes. Once again, my name is Kevin, and I want to thank Liam again for joining us. And we're out. <laughs>